Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your utility shed. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your shed is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with the shed. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. There are steps within this assembly that require more than one person, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we get into the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a 3 8 socket, a 7 16 socket, a rubber mallet, a Phillips head screwdriver, safety glasses, a drill. You may just use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware, and a Phillips head bit. This video is meant to be used as a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement. So for the best results, make sure to have the assembly manual on hand during the build. It's also crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. Take a hinge tube that has a notch in both ends and insert it into the round hole at the bottom of the left door, which is the door with the Lifetime logo. Add the locking hardware to the door, it may be helpful to use a Phillips head screwdriver to punch out the holes on the door. The washers go on the back side of the door and the hardware will need to be tightened with a 7 16 socket. Take the door channel that has these two large holes and line up the holes on the edge of the door channel with these notches on the door. Add the hardware to these holes, making sure to insert them diagonally. Connect the deadbolts to the small holes at the ends of the door channel, making sure that the spring is closer to the door. Attach the two halves of the handle together and then secure it to the door, making sure that the washers go on the back side. Take a hinge tube that has a notch on both ends and insert it into the round hole on the edge of the right door. Take the square tube that has these two holes, make sure the holes line up with these holes on the door. 
and then slide it into the square hole at the bottom of the door. Before you finish sliding the tube all the way up, make sure to add the cap. Attach the two halves of the handle together, then attach it to the door, making sure that the washer goes on the hardware on the back side. Place a locking bracket and latch over the door and then secure with the hardware. The long skinny bolts go closer to the edge and the thicker bolts go just below. You'll tighten this hardware with a 3 8 and 7 16 socket. Now attach the four panels together by lifting one panel up at a 45 degree angle, interlocking the tabs, and then lay it back down. It's helpful to have another person stand on the other panel so it doesn't slide around. As you lay the floor panel down, it may want to separate, so make sure you're pushing pretty hard into the other floor panel so that this doesn't happen. Secure the two panels together by inserting the hardware through these divots along the middle seam on the outside edges. Take a wall panel labeled AHD and insert the tabs at the bottom into these cutouts on the back edge of the floor. Slide the panel over to the left to lock it into place. Usually I'm comfortable kicking this in with my foot, but if you're not, you can use a block and a rubber mallet. Add another wall panel labeled AHD next to the previous panel using the same method. It may be helpful to lean the previous panel forward just a little bit to allow clearance for them to overlap. Secure the two panels together, but before you do, make sure they're flush at the top of the panel, and if you notice any plastic over the holes, go ahead and punch them out with a Phillips head screwdriver, but I find it easy enough just to drill through with the screw. Take a corner panel labeled AGW and insert the tabs at the bottom into the cutouts on this edge. Slide the panel over to lock it into place. Lean the panel away from the floor, fold the panel in half, and then make sure it goes on the inside of the neighboring panel and apply downward pressure to lock it into place. Secure the panels through the five holes like you did the other one. Take a wall tube and insert a cap into one end. Insert the wall tube into the bottom of the wall panel labeled AGY, making sure that the cap that we put in earlier stays at the bottom. Add the wall panel next to the one we just installed and then secure them together with the hardware.
slide the hinge cap onto the wall tube, making sure it's oriented like this. Bend the wall panel over and insert the tube into the hole on the floor panel. Take the corner wall panel labeled AGL and add it to the shed using the same method as the other corner. The only difference is this panel will go behind the neighboring panel instead of in front. Take the other wall tube and insert a plug into one of the ends of the tube. Insert the wall tube into the hole at the bottom of the wall panel labeled AGN, making sure that the end with the cap that we placed on earlier is at the bottom. Add the wall panel to this edge of the floor using the same method as before. Slide the hinge cap onto the wall tube and then slide the wall tube into the hole on the floor panel. On the front edge of the floor, add the bracket to the corner panel, making sure that the long side of the bracket is on the floor. The black screw goes in the floor and the other screw goes into the wall. There is no divot on the floor. Repeat for the wall panel on the other side. Take two wall supports that look like this, attach an L bracket to each end, making sure that the long side of the L bracket gets attached to the wall support. When adding the hardware, make sure the screw goes into the bracket with the washer and that the nut goes on the other side. Secure the hardware with a Phillips bit and a 3 8 wrench, making sure the brackets are oriented like this when you tighten. Insert the wall support into this notch on this wall, making sure that the divots line up with the holes in the wall support. Make sure at the bottom, the bracket looks something like this so that it fits in the notch at the bottom of the wall panel. Once the wall support is in place, secure it to the wall through the bottom two holes. Repeat the previous step on the opposite side of the shed. Secure the L bracket at the bottom of the wall panel to the floor with the black screws. Take the other two wall supports and secure them to the back wall, making sure that the two holes that are close together are at the top. Add the hardware to the top pole, making sure the nut goes on the outside. 
You'll need a 7 16 wrench to tighten this hardware. Now we're gonna secure the wall to the tube through this divot, so make sure the tube is pushed all the way down. This step may be difficult, so make sure you start slow in your drilling and pick up speed as it goes in. Take the square tube that has three oblong holes and place it in the middle of the roof panel, making sure that the small holes on the ends are facing up. Line up the oblong holes with the divots in the roof panel and then secure with the hardware. Take the tube that has the oblong holes and line them up with the notches in the roof panel. Then make sure that the edge with the smaller oblong holes is facing up. Secure through all the oblong holes except for the ones on the very end. Take the left door and slide the hinge tube into the hinge cap, making sure that the notch slides over the tab on the hinge cap. At the top of the door, place a hinge cap over the two tubes. Repeat the previous step for the right door. Open the doors and with the help of another person, lift the roof onto the shed, making sure that the header bar goes over the doors. In the back left corner, secure the roof panel to the shed, inserting the hardware at a 45 degree angle. It may be helpful to have someone on the outside applying downward pressure. Secure the back right corner using the same method. Secure the roof panel to the right side of the shed. And repeat for the opposite side. Next, secure this corner to the shed by inserting a screw going through the header bar from the back side. Secure the L bracket at the top of the wall support to the bar on the roof.
and repeat for the opposite side. Now we're going to add the shelf brackets to the shed. There are four different height settings that you can choose from and they're determined by these divots on the wall. Decide how high you want the shelf to go and then place the shelf bracket oriented like this. On the back wall supports, there are slits for these shelf brackets. Add these shelf brackets to the same height as the brackets we added earlier. Take the shelf labeled GEL and the support tube and place the support tube into the notch on the bottom of the shelf. Place the shelf onto the brackets making sure that the support tube is closer to the front. Secure the shelf to the brackets. Each bracket will receive two screws. Secure the wall support on each side of the shed in the remaining open holes. Take the wall hooks and place them under these notches throughout the shed. Now that your shed is done, you'll need to level the doors. To see a video on how to properly do that, follow this link here. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime utility shed. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.